Hello Noble Ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. And today we'd like to talk about the gladiator classes and types again. Now if you have as you have noticed in my channel I have made a video about the gladiators and all the different classes and types of gladiators and I noticed that you liked this video. In fact you supported me a lot and I wish to thank you for having supported my channel the Metatron to grow and gain good likes and good views. So since I have promised you that if you had liked my video and, and commented I would have continued and made the second part about the less common and minor classes, gladiator classes, then uh, since I do uh, wish to fulfill that promise here is the video for you. So please keep in mind that this video exists because of you. So without further ado I would like to talk about the less common and less commonly known gladiator classes. The Equus. Now not all gladiators fought on feet. Some gladiators used horses, so we have gladiators fighting on horseback. Now these kind of fights were used to, it was a way to open up the gladiators fights. Now these um, gladiators would normally begin the fight on horse and then dismount and continue the fight um, on foot with normal uh, weapons. Now talking about the equipment of these um, gladiators, they had a closed helmet with visor, they had a, sh a rounded a round and small shield, they had a lance and also a gladius. They would use the lance when they were on horseback and they would use the gladius when, they're, when they were fighting uh, after dismounting. Now what's interesting about this is that we don't have many um, paintings about these gladiators on horseback because most paintings uh, show them fight after dismounting because the, they had kind of a, you know, they, they would start on horseback, as I said, but then the, 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 the actual most important part of the fight would be on foot. Now, um, but there is one way to recognize them, and that is the tunic they are wearing, because most gladiators, as I have said in my other video about gladiators, many gladiators were wearing subligaculum, which was a kind of underwear that they were wearing, kind of clothing, very t garment, here, here's the word, that they were using, but only the equus would actually wear tunics. So if you see gladiators uh, fighting with sword and shield, um, they are probably equus and they started the fight on horseback. The Essedarius. The Essedarius was another kind of gladiator that would not start on foot his, um, his battle, his fight. They were um, normally using chariots. Now these chariots was ba were based on the, um, th even the name Essedarius was based on, on the name of the uh, Celtic um, chariots and so would the, these kind of gladiators were representing from the eyes of the Romans they were representing the Gauls or people from Britannia okay now even in this case they would begin the fight on their chariots and then they would dismount and continue the fight on foot now interestingly enough their equipment is interesting because they had a manica which is the protection for one of the arms they used a gladius they also their legs would be wrapped in clothing for protection and they were using helmets now the helmets changed in the very uh, at the beginning helmets looked very similar to the uh, helmets of legionaries but then the helmets used by these the esedarius became the same helmets as the secutor. Now I will show um, a few secutor in the next um, kind of gladiator class because it's a gladiator class that fights against secutor so if you don't know what a secutor looks like you can just look at the next gladiator but if you want detailed information about secutor then I would rather um, suggest you to watch the other video I made about the mo most commonly used and known gladiator classes. Pontarius now this is an interesting variation to standard gladiator matches. Now in this match we have two kinds of gladiators that I've already mentioned and talked about in my previous videos, which is the Reziarius, the one in the middle, the one using the net and the trident, fighting against two secutor, which are the ones that I mentioned before, that you know they had that, that kind of round helmet as I've said in my previous video, in order to fight. Reziarius. Now, in this case, you see that the Reziarius is on top of a bridge, and that's which in Latin is pons, where you, where the word pontarius comes from. Someone like a Reziarius on a on a on a on a bridge, basically. Okay, and so a person, a fighter on a bridge. So the uh, Reziarius here, in, in since he has less 
um, he's an, an a disadvantage. He he also is provided with missiles, meaning rocks that he can throw on t trying to hit the two Sakuta that will try to attack him. So he has an advantageous position because he's on top of this bridge, but on the other hand, it's a very tough uh, fight. But this also shows us um, that Reziarius must have been a very fearsome uh, uh, opponent, considering it's the only class that would normally fight against two different different um, opponents. Sagittarius. Now, the Sagittarius, well, Sagittarius means archer, basically, and it's a kind of gladiator that we can't say much about because we don't know much about. There is only one um, representation, uh, one um, archaeological discovery up to, up to now that is found on a relief um, in Florence, Italy, in Firenze, uh, where we see two um, armored Sagittari uh, f with helmet uh, fighting on a, against each other inside a arena, which we don't even know if is the Colosseum or not. So we do know that. It must have happened, maybe not very often, but it is possible that there were, very plausible, that there must have been, so that, that there were um, archers, gladiator archers, uh, although they must not have been very common uh, for, for in, in Roman times either. Gladiatrix. Now, there were women gladiators. They must have not been, must have not been as common as men, uh, gladiators, but they were a, they are a historical reality. There is a low rel relief um, made of marble, uh, which it dates around the first or second century, which was found in Turkey and is currently displayed in the British Museum that shows two uh, women gladiators. Um, now, what's interesting about them is the fact that, first of all, it tells us a few informations about them. Um, they are called Amazon and Achillea, so uh, we know they're probably not real names, but names used as gladiators. Um, we know they are fighting against each other, they are wearing heavy armor, uh, well, heavy armored. And um, so, as far as the equipment is concerned, um, they they look like uh, probably provocatrices, so provocator, which is again a kind of uh, heavy uh, gladiator that I have talked about in details in my other video. And also, it seems like they they tell us in this um, in this low relief that they have received the missio. Now, receiving the missio means suspension. So when you honorably complete. Uh, your uh, gladiator career and you survive, then you are basically uh, free. You become a free person. Um, so this is what we know. We notice that they have no tunic, they have no helmet, and their breasts are naked. So as far as the more, going more in details about the uh, equipment that they were using, they were using subligaculung, the garment, um, greaves, a manica, so the protection, the sleeve, the protection for the arm, only one. And they were both using a sword um, and a shield. Crupellarius. Now I know what you're thinking about, um, what you're thinking of. Um, the helmet does look like similar to a great medieval great helmet. It could be a kind of um, predecessor of the knight in full armor. We don't, we don't really know, but it's that's the idea. Now the Crupellarius is mentioned by Tacitus, and it was is considered to be a, a Gallic, a Gallic warrior, a warrior from Gaul, from the province of Gaul, Gallia. Now we do have, but we don't have a lot of of paintings or uh, representations of this kind of gladiator. So it must have not been very common in the empire. We only have like one little bronze uh, statue representing one. Now this kind of gladiator comes from a kind of uh, warrior from Gallia um, that actually was used against the Roman legions in the, 20, in the 21st year after Christ, Anno Domini, um, during a riot against the legions of Giulio Indo. Now, it uh, seems like that the uh, Gallic forces uh, were using two kinds of fighters. One were the normal poorly equipped warriors, and the others were 
basically these ones, the Crupellarius, as they were called by Tacitus, who were heavily, fully armoured um, warriors. Now, uh, it seems like from the uh, text we read, in, in Latin obviously, but we read that uh, uh, they, the legionaries, at first, they had a lot of troubles and problems um, attacking these, uh, fighting these Crupellari, because they were heavily armoured and was very tough to kill them. And in order to beat them, they actually used axes and pick axes and in the words of Tacitus as if they were demolishing a wall a stone wall so um, and then they they actually beat them so as it was custom in Rome after winning a war against a, a rebellious population they took this figure and put it uh, created a, a, um, a gladiator in the arena uh, so that everyone could see how um, these warriors would would lose if they were trying to challenge the power of Rome. Now, if I can add a person, my personal opinion about this kind of gladiator, I think it must have not been very effective. Now, of course, when we look at him, we think that you know he has got an advantage because he has got full um, armor, and so it must be very difficult to manage to kill him, particularly considering the kind of weapons that other gladiators were using that were not uh, pickaxes, for example. However, you do need to consider that. At that time, I don't think the technology was ready for full plate armor because we don't have pointing and also because uh, the kind of mobility that he must have had, considering it was mainly Lorica segmentata, um, must have not been very, very nice, uh, very, very good. Also, uh, we need to consider the ventilation must have been a big problem, so you could have tried to tire him. Um, so a lot was, uh, was you know, his stamina was playing a very important role. So only very big gladiators could have been part of this kind of class. And also, um, the weight of this whole armour must have been enormous, if you consider again that there was no pointing and that we don't have the articulated perfection of late medieval uh, suits of armour and harness. All right, then, I think this covers um, most of the less minor gladiator classes, or classes that not many people know about. Um, this is not all. There are still other gladiator classes that I have to talk about, but considering that I've been speaking for almost 13 minutes, I think that for this second video, this will do. In the next video that I will make um, about gladiator classes, the next and last video about gladiator classes, I will mention and talk about some gladiator classes that honestly believe me, you would not believe that actually existed. If you liked this video, please remember to thumb up and comment below. Alright then, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will make many other videos about ancient Rome and about the Middle Ages. Thank you very much for watching as always and remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.